I think we won this game and our opponent is absolutely not happy about it. You know what? This seems pretty good. We actually flew the board with with legendaries. Well, that was risky, but yeah. Let's go with Jaxis. He's making troubles. I think, man, we are actually exploding right now. Man, this deck is absolutely awesome and now he cannot invoke the spell. Oh my god, like this is so powerful. Hello everyone, it's Slav here and today we have a very, very, very special deck because even though you know Jodaya the Unifar, you've probably seen some of the decks with this one. Believe me, this deck is different. This deck is much better than the other versions, which is the reason I didn't showcase the others. I just felt they are a bit too weak. And this one is definitely not weak at all. It does some new things and new interactions, which makes this deck absolutely over the top. And I mean like really over the top. You will see in some of the games that we are on the absolute losing side. Then Jodaya survives for one turn and that's enough to absolutely swing the game in our direction. And if it survives two turns, you are just basically using your whole deck because you have infinite mana in a way and infinite uh, creatures in a way. So you just go absolutely over the top. and. This is the reason why we have so much mana. It's not strictly infinite, but it's really close to. And it will ramp you so much that you can basically play 3-4 legendaries a turn, which combined with Jodaya means that each one of those spells is basically doubled. So, and you can have infinite legendaries thanks to Radrabic, the Urborg, totally casual name. And yeah, because whenever you play the second legendary, it dies. So then you use this ability trigger and the token that you create is not legendary. So you can basically play three Danics in a row and you will get all of them. So pretty insane. So Relic of Legends, three mana mana stone basically helps you cast Jotaya a little bit, uh, ramps you as well. But the real power is tap an untapped legendary creature you control at man one mana of any color. It means that whenever you create those crazy copies with Radrabic, all of them can start ramping you. And yeah, you, you have so many ways to go over the top with this deck is insane. And to be honest, it's probably one of the hardest deck I have been playing. Like I misplayed this deck so much, it's not even funny. So if you are a skilled like player in this deck, you can absolutely do such a crazy stuff. Uh, like you can make highlight vi highlight videos b basically based on this deck. Like the potential is so much here and it's such a hard deck to play correctly because you have so many triggers. You need to remember all the interactions. Uh, cards like Jaxis. Jaxis is a huge one here. The fact that you can blitz usually means that you just cycle it, right? Not with this deck. This means like with this deck, you get full benefit for the Blitz with Radrabic. So you basically get the Troublemaker back as a full version and you still draw a card. And this, the Blitz cast, uh, counts as a casting spell and the converted mana cost is still four, even though you cast it for two. It means that if you have Jodai, you basically pay two mana for the Blitz Jaxis and you still get the four mana trigger from this. And when it dies, you get the trigger from Urborg. So that's actually so insane because we will hit a three mana legendary creature from this one. And it just gets over the top so quickly. You can even use it to ramp with the Relic of Legends to cast another legendary creature. And yeah, you, you, just, you just get so much stuff. Sorry, that was the previous video. And you can, this is so funny, you can actually stack Talias and you can make like your opponent pay four extra mana for each non-creature spell. <laughs> like how fun is this? Because when she dies, she just comes back as a, as a creature. And honestly, you can stack Radrabix. That's another strategy for the deck. You can play another one. Then you sacrifice one of them and it dies. Then it's a non-legendary token. So every time your legendary creature dies, you get two tokens now. If you cast another Radrabic, it, you get two triggers and two tokens extra. Like it's getting so ridiculous at some point that, you know, after losing Legendary, you can get five new ones or something crazy like this. Like there is no limit to the deck, honestly. And that's why Geralf is also here, Visionary Stitcher, three mana, one four, not extremely impressive, but zombies you control have flying. And guess what? Whatever we create with this one, 
uh, it's a black zombie in the additional to its other colors. So <laughs> flying actually is so important because thanks to Judaya, all of those creatures are basically like 7-7 seven, seven or 9-9, nine, nine, something like this usually. And it means that you attack with three and you win the game. And that's usually how your opponent tries to play. He just starts with everything he had on the board and tries to find some kind of sweeper or big removal for Judea. And Geralt definitely does prevent this one. And you can also use sacrifice ability because when you sacrifice, you usually get it back thanks to Radrabic, whatever you sacrifice, and you still get a new zombie. And X being the toughness usually also means a 7-7 zombie or something. It has flying good stuff will happen to you. We also have from interesting parts around Street Artist. Why is it here? Because it's basically a very good blocker early game, one mana flash, so you probably prevent some damage, you have more time, but most importantly it's target for the Judaia ability. If you cast a legendary creature for two mana, you probably want to hit something, and this is the something. And the fact it's legendary means that it buffs the whole board, it can use relic, when it dies you get extra copies, things like this. We don't really use this ability. It's a one mana flash legendary creature, that's it. So this is the deck, the mana base is, as you could expect, very complex. We basically, the big uh, engines are secluded courtyard for as a human, we play this one, and plaza of heroes because everything is legendary here. The rest is the fix basically. And one very interesting interaction, yeah, we play for Takenuma because it hits basically our whole deck, the channel ability. So we don't care about the land super much, we just use one mana channel ability on this one because you have so many legendaries that it's, get, it's getting discounted to one black mana and that's extremely cheap and you will nearly always hit something even if you don't have any legendaries in the graveyard. Just cast it and you will hit one of them. So it's basically a free card though in a way. So. This is the deck. I find it extremely strong and extremely hard to play. Uh, I think on the big scale, this has like 59% win rate, which is extremely high. It's level of mono black right now, I believe. So yeah, definitely a sleeping giant here. Maybe we will start seeing it more and more because it seems to perform extremely well. And after playing with this one, I definitely know why. The power is off the charts. You just need one turn with Jodaya and you will probably always win the game. And even if your opponent gets sweepers, you still get the triggers from Radrabic, so it's still there. So definitely a strong one. Try this one out if you like Legendaries, and you probably will be very, very happy with the results. So with that being said, as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps and it really boosts, you know, the magical YouTube algorithm. So thank you and enjoy the games. All right, we are going first. We have pretty nice drops, so we'll definitely keep this one. So the first one needs to be blue, but this one is actually perfect for all the mana that we will need, so this and this. So let's start with the most important round. Of course, one drop, easy. Okay, this has haste. So, or the flash, sorry. Yeah, so let's play the launch. With Takenuma, we can cycle Takenuma, so we don't need uh, to hold this one for cycling. It will be probably too expensive anyway. Well, this will be an interesting game. Uh, street Artist will definitely help against all the sacrifice effects, you know. Alright, he has only... He, did he play the land? Yeah. Just checking, just checking. So he cannot give it the death touch. So even if he removes it, that's absolutely fine, that's a one drop. So then we play King Darien, the, a lot of numbers. I should probably know what it means. 100, I don't remember. Uh, so, I don't know, he's one of the kings, okay? There were a lot of Darians in this dynasty, <laughs> so he went for the card down. I kind of, I kind of like it. Let's just check the mana. Other creatures, so two, three other creatures get stuff. Yeah, probably our best bet right now. And let's just go for the human, because that will be a bit easier. Alright. Uh, we can click it. Oh wow, we can sacrifice it. Maybe let's not do it. I'm not blocking, of course, because he will attack before tapping mana. Uh, if he has Liliana, that's probably the best play at this turn. And yeah, this will be 
pretty hard to answer, but if he has anything else, <laughs> why would he have anything else, right? Man, one drop into removal, into perfect three drop. Oh man, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Off you go. All right, we have Takanuma. So, do we go for Jaxus? I guess we go. Hmm. No, no, no. We go for Blitz, and that's much better. It's unfortunate that we cannot use Takanuma, but you know what? It's fine. At least we get rid of Lidiana, and that's a high Sorry, value already. We draw a card, which is also amazing. And I guess, man, like, it depends what his draw is. So far, he had pretty much perfect hand. Like, if he has more sacrifice or removal effects, Jodaya dies, and then we cannot play. But if, he, if this survives, we can start using Takanuma and Legendaries to just stack all the value. And in like one, two turns, we can absolutely go over the board with this one. But we are not at five mana stage, so he probably, if he has invoked the spell, is still in the hand, so we cannot really tell. If you don't see invoke the spell at turn five and six, it's probably not there, right? All right, that took a while, but I guess. So he will be extremely efficient with all the mana. Good call, and he will pump this one and then step. All right, all right, all right. Let's play the lance, and Takanuma will be last. This is a cut down mana, I guess. I don't think there's a way around it, bro. If you have another great removal, like Invoke Despair, Liliana, Infernal Grasp. Uh, well, I guess we dead. If he doesn't, we just start casting uh, legendary creatures as crazy, and next turn Invoke Despair does barely anything. Like, it basically draws cards on me and deals damage. So, that would be great. The question is how much time we have. Uh, he can double attack and I cannot block because then he threatens the death touch on the other one. So, he should definitely attack first if he wants to, you know, try to bait the removal or let's say bait the block let's say yeah this will be a hard one it all depends on his draw ours were like we had an average draw it wasn't very bad it wasn't very great i think what we need honestly we need this guy into the board and we can start stacking legendaries yeah took him a while but after one minute he did the thing. Yeah, I will click it. You you can pass the priority. <laughs> it definitely takes a while, but if he pumps and nothing else, I kinda I'm kinda okay with it, I think. We might play one Takenuma and cast the second one, because this is four mana. This will be two mana because of the discount and we will have exactly six so we can play everything in the next turn. And I think this will probably the play, probably be the play. Yeah, one should be enough. You know what? That seems pretty good. We will be able to cast this one as well. So we actually flood the board with with legendaries. Talia. Well, that was risky, but yeah. Well, I guess we don't need to fear Talia ourselves. So it's fine. Okay, like our board will be absolutely crazy after this turn. Let's go with Jaxis. He's making troubles. And we get another thing. Man, we are actually exploding right now. And our cre Oh no. Uh, but, oh, but she won't be a legendary, so it's fine. Man, this deck is absolutely awesome, and now he cannot invoke this pair. Oh my god, like this is so powerful. Because this will not be a legendary. A small Talia nearly an original one and suddenly we can stack the tax and he needs to pay plus two on every non-creature spell that's absolutely busted man can we kill him <laughs> can we kill him what the question like we can block yeah like this is blitzed so we will get a blocker here it will be untapped uh 15 damage out of nowhere 
and don't forget, last turn it was just Dudaya. The rest of the, the things came this turn, it's actually so insane. The question is, can he kill us somehow? I don't think he can. I think he lost. Even with such a great opening, I think he still lost. Man, if you don't answer Jediah, you just lose in two turns. That's the rule. You need to kill this. And with double Talia, his options are extremely limited right now. He can use what? Trespasser? Like, I don't think there exists card that would help him. Like, Invoke Despair doesn't do anything. It deals two damage, but he cannot deal the rest then. Uh, of course, he cannot cast it because he needs seven mana because of the Talia. Even Inferno Grasp. He needs to pay 4 mana, then Judaya dies. Yeah, that's probably the best one. The problem is that Judaya will become a zombie. And that means that whatever he does, he... Like, I don't know, man. I think he lost. It will take him probably 15 minutes. Yeah? Man, we actually won this game. I cannot believe how powerful Judaya is. Whoa, I was sure we are losing this one. It's time to shine. So we have... We are on the play with Talia and Jodaya. It should go well, but we will see. Double Takenuma is of course not optimal, but we'll just turn it into a spell, so it should be fine. It should be fine. There might be some issues with casting Jodaya. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Like, we have nice opening, but it all depends what we are playing against and, you know, this, this kind of stuff. If he has removal, if he is extremely aggressive, we want the mana fix, so we definitely play the trial. No reason to cycle it. And of course, why would he ever not have a perfect opening? That's not what aggro players do. Uh, I, I guess it might be aggro version of mono black, but we'll see. Maybe it's a control version. Tenacious underdog. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is definitely not... Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Not a single mana wasted. Classic. Classic. So we don't have blue, and that's kind of an issue. I guess we have to play like this then. A bit unfortunate. Honestly, we won't be able to block with Talia, but he can just block with the curtains, so... Not much of a difference. Well, definitely mana base is challenging in this one. We might just cycle uh, or use the ability for Takenuma. Alright, peel first. Sure. Alright, that's a land. This is a decent land. Alright, do we have all the mana? We'll have black, blue, white black blue white forest we like one hmm i guess if we play this so oh my god my brain melted so this will be blue this will be red this will be green which one we like <laughs> what are the color pies anyway okay 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 whatever whatever we will get there Oh my god, Sloth, you are embarrassing yourself. And I need to talk so I cannot think about it. I'm not good at talking and thinking at the same time. <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. We might as well attack. Like, sometimes they, they go through and we'll get another one anyway. So, no. Uh, let's end the turn anyway and see what it goes. With double Judaya, even if he uses curtains, it doesn't give him too much benefit, so... You know, there's that, I guess. There's that. Alright, we missed the mountain. That makes sense. Okay, it took me like two minutes to check which are the color pies, but I got there at, <laughs> at some point. <laughs> oh, this is, this is pretty scary. Alright, so a wolf sleeper. Uh, it didn't attack, that's good. Our opponent has really des decent curve. It probably is Lagurella. That's basically the only removal that we will have. So let's get her. Yep. I love to lose some HP. Always makes me happier. Alright, this one. Uh, 
In this case, I really do not want to lose Lagrella. I probably will, but I don't want to. So for this reason, and do we attack? Yeah, we do. Like, this is a free attack. He cannot kill Talia because uh, he has no left mana. And yeah, we sneak to damage. Easy. <laughs> I'm winning them. So the point that I didn't want to exile my heroes, like you know, I want them, I want Lagrella to survive, so show that is not back on the menu. So I will actually really remove one of my, you know, legendary creatures. So it's not a good play. Oh, you can just have another, I guess. Sure. <laughs> well, Fair Jedi. It's definitely an interesting one. I mean, I could get this guy and start copying stuff, like copying Lagrella, right? It doesn't do much though. Oh, that's hard. I think we just blitz it. I want a cargo, we need to hit something. Uh, what is the best way to do it? Not really sure. Like, this is still legendary, right? Let's make sure. It's a copy of another creature. Yeah. I guess we can cycle. You know what? I will cycle something that is not legendary. So, I guess this, <laughs> you know, a standard Jedi into this. And let's just attack with those two. Like, we don't super care. I just want this to die, so I draw a card basically smart blocks don't make big difference but still i just want to have mana so i can actually cast my judas all right token token yeah yeah sure not much of a difference here so we drew two cards so we are two turns ahead of what we are normally in card draw so as you can see we still cannot hit the lands but maybe with the next draw if we can cast judaya we should be fine Enjoy your duress. Man, Sheldred. Sheldred, we need to kill this. Uh, sure. Cool. I hope it was worth it. It's a really weird version. Honestly. And that's a Judaya. Alright, alright. We actually can play the, the big game right now. With the big boys. And things look much better right now. Alright, so... Lagrella definitely not. Do we attack with the Jadar? Like, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think this is this is fine. We get value from Jedi anyway, from the next turn onwards. And we need to start dealing damage because we don't have a lot of time. We can use First Strike from Talia to kill one of the Death Touch creatures. I guess he can turn the concealing curtains and pump the sleeper, but that's not enough damage to kill us, I think. I think. Oh wow. That took him a while. <laughs> we are tapped out, so there's no risk to follow up with, you know, mid hook massacre, so he can freely block. Let's see. Is that invoke? Alright, alright. Interesting. This means he cannot go for the curtains win? anymore. Sacrifices a creature. Wow, that was a power play. <laughs> okay, I I don't understand this one at all, but it's it's cool. All right, so if we cast this, we know exactly what we will get. All right, whenever you cast, is this casting blitz? I think, yeah, you can cast for a blitz cost. So we actually get the full benefit. Whenever you cast from your hand. Yeah, let's try it. I think we should get the trigger, right? Yeah. And we get it for full mana cost. Right? Lesser mana value. I think the value is still 4 here. Let's try it. Oh man, like this will be a huge hit. We can actually try to force block. Uh, we cannot attack with Jedi, I think, because he has death touch creature. But I guess only one, so he will have to get rid of Shorda to do it. 
sure, I take it. So yeah, uh, it is actually lower than four. So Blitz is absolutely amazing here, honestly. All right, we don't have uh, the zombie guy, so that's a bit unfortunate, but it's fine. Well, Liliana might be a problem for the next turn. All right, I think this is this is okay already. So we will try to make some force blocks, I guess. This is pretty hard one. We cannot attack with Lagrella probably because he just blocks with Shouldered and then Lagrella dies and he gets another Shouldered. So that's exactly what we don't want to see. I want to keep my Jedi in case something bad happens to this one. Because our board seems huge, but without Jedi it wouldn't be huge at all. Oh, uh, is our mono black player not happy about the results? With main deck Duress into Pilfer, into Liliana sacrificing a token, <laughs> into Corrupt Court Official, into Curtains. Man, you just need to play a discard deck. Let's not bother with the whole mono black thing. <laughs> Alright, so it seems that we made our opponent rage quit, which I find successful if he's playing mono black. And that's his response to our deck. Okay, maybe he got disconnected, who knows. Alright, so what are the attacks? I think this one... I don't like Liliana, but she's not the worst thing that will happen. I would really prefer... So he has 5 mana, right? So he had no way to cast Invoke Despair yet in this game. So there's high chance this is the card. We have 1 blocker, 2, 3. 3 blockers. This one is forced already. I think this is fine. I think this is a good balance between being super aggressive and super defensive. Because it means that next turn he probably will die. Because we have so many creatures. And that should be enough. That should be enough. I'm not sure about the Danik. Honestly, if I wasn't recording, I would probably think longer whether I want to play it or not. He's at 2. Alright, so he took all the damage. He thinks that he might kill us next turn. I don't know what the sweeper would be. No meat hook. Uh, I think let's go for the Danik. And that's a big mistake. I hit twice. If I play this... If I play this, we would get extra 2 damage, so he would need to sacrifice another creature. So in the end, that was a really, really bad play on my part. Not sure if that affected the... Of course, he would block additionally, but... Yeah, I guess that would put him in an even worse situation, especially that we get a 1 drop. Yeah, so that was a huge mistake. I missed basically a plus 2, plus 2 to all my board. And that's a big difference. So, yeah, learn from my mistakes because I definitely didn't play very well this one. But, yeah, it's really hard deck to play, honestly, at least for me. So many interactions, and all of those legendaries have so many interactions with Jedi, with Blitz, with tokens, with copies, with interactions. Like, you know, I think we won this game, and our opponent is absolutely not happy about it. <laughs> Alright, I don't want to be this guy, but let's signalize to our opponent that maybe he can need, he needs to start clicking this glowing button. Alright, cool. Cool, I'm super proud. We still get the card though, and that's pretty epic. It means that uh, Lidiana cannot discard Jodaya. Man, I think he's doing it on purpose. Like, it doesn't seem that he's actually thinking about anything. He's just salty, I think. Yeah, and it's not disconnect because it keeps happening every uh, like round. He just tries to start, but he's at zero. So, yeah, guys, we we are making mono black players rich. So yeah, win in my book, I guess. Uh, that's that's so weird. I don't understand this role pick field to be honest. All right, we drew a card. All right, from the blitz. I don't care about... So he can heal too. It's not a difference, right? Our zombie is flying for some reason. <laughs> Why are you flying? Bro, stop flying. Get here and like rot or something. I don't know. Of course, it's from Gerv. Pretty sweet card that is not really ever played anywhere. Yeah, this is actually first time I have played this card in my life, probably. 
Except, of course, the previous games with this deck. Sure, enjoy your card, though, <laughs> I guess. Of course, in next turn we attack with literally everything, because he cannot defend this attack. I'm waiting with Otawara, it's one blue mana. Like, the, the synergy between the channel lands and the legendaries is insane. Uh, because I don't think he can kill us, and if he can, it will be like something extremely close. Like, in... Sure. Enjoy, bro. Man, this is a discard deck. What are you doing, bro? Like, you made mono black wars. Oh, he thinks we will protect Jediah. No, bro. We will, we will kill you next time. So, of course, we bounce the shoulder. I actually should have done it in response. Man, I'm making so many mistakes. So the play was to bounce it in response to Lidiana plus one and just kill him. Don't worry, it won't matter, but so many missed opportunities this game. And we still won, and we made him rage. So, <laughs> yeah, deck must be really good. All right, so we have absolutely slow hand, and we are going second. Oh, that's not a good start, but you know me, I'll still take it, even if not, it's not the best. Because we can cycle the Jaxis, so I think we should be okay. Let's go for human. It's not about you. You you are not part of the cool crew, uh, but the rest of the deck is. So, as it's okay, so some kind of weird ramp. Maybe an enchantment? I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's go like this. And you know what, at this point I will do the thing. Smork. Oh, so worth. So worth. The value is out the chart. <laughs> and of course we do it to fight like 3 drop, 2 drop, something to... To like play for the next turn, you know? Hallowed hunting. That's super scary. That's honestly super scary. I think this will be Danik. We might just try to raise him, but with this it will be hard. Man, it's, it's getting scary. Okay. Okay, so he will try to make as many tokens as possible, I guess. Okay, nice one. Nice one, bro. You can see that he's actually he actually knows how to play. Which is never a good thing to see from your opponent, basically. Alright, so we have decent mana but we lack some right we don't have green and red so this one cannot provide both okay relic of legends definitely can all right all right all right all right all right this one will be interesting we don't have a lot of time they don't seem to be extremely interacting next turn we can cast the dia so I could cast this and Jadar, but then we don't have really good blocks. I guess we don't get hit super hard next turn, so maybe this is the setup. Or we can just go rat drop big of Urborg. Man, what a freaking name. Let's try this one. I guess I will pain myself to death. And... No, no, he will attack. He wants to kill us. And if he doesn't, that's even better for us. I don't think he can get it to... F oh my god. <laughs> oh, the scaling is off the charts. Oh man. Like, we need to hit a lot of Lagrelas this game. Preferably two Lagrelas a turn would be perfect. Uh, this is definitely uh, an issue. We need to go absolutely crazy. If we had the Relic of Legends on turn 3, maybe we could keep up with all the mana. But right now it's super, super scary. We of course don't block this one because he untaps stuff and that's not something we need. However, of course we can use Radrabi to get free stuff. And more free stuff here. Oh, nice. Vigilance? Other zombies. Oh, that's so neat. You know, reading my cards. <laughs> all right so we can do a little bit relic is so important but do we have time to cast it i don't want to tap too much man we are getting smoke for so much you cannot imagine 
Like we will definitely play this guy. We could play that relic. Yeah, okay, okay. This is probably the best moment we we have to do it. Do ya do I want to attack? No, 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 no. We want to do the thingy. Alright, so let's target this one. Now we get rid of Takenuma, I guess. Honestly, Jadara doesn't seem super great. I think we can find something better. Alright, I want to choose to get this one. And now we multiply. And now we are also going. I just fear that we might die before. Uh, attacking doesn't really help this turn. No attacks. This gets sacrificed. sacrificed and then we got even more tokens. Like, we are doing stuff. It's just a question whether we were wandering behind. Like, every turn we go, we go harder and harder. And with all of this, we can actually cast for like 10 mana next turn. The question is, can we keep, keep flying to everything and just kill us from 17? And I think the answer is yes, unfortunately. Alright. I'm not even... Alright. Oh, one more. So this will be the one. Uh, I don't exactly like what I see. Man, we are both scaling extremely hard, but I think he was on the play and he got a little bit more explosive early game. We missed the relic on the turn we needed it. And this is the one turn. That was a good game, my friend. I, I don't know what the icon was. Oh yeah, it's fine. We are at minus 30. 